38, if f of x equals five rad two x, what is the value of the inverse of f 10 set into that function? So we know that f of x equals five rad two x. Now with inverse functions, we always wanna switch the x and y values. So if f of x is the same thing as y, y equals five rad two x, and now I'm gonna swap x and y and say that x equals five rad two y. Now, from here, they didn't ask us what is the inverse function of f of x. They might ask that and they want, they'll have the whole functions as the answer choices. If they did, we would wanna sit here and isolate y. And we could isolate y. First, we would divide by five. And then we would have x over five set equal to the square root of two y. We'll square both sides to get rid of the radical. We have x squared over 25 equals two y. And then we would divide by two or multiply times one half here. And we have x squared over 50 equals y, which would be the same as the inverse function here, x squared over 50. Now we could plug in 10 here, it's not a big deal. We go ahead and take the inverse function of 10, and we have 10 squared over 50, which means that 10 squared is 100 over 50, which we know reduces to two. So that makes the answer choice C. But there's definitely an easier way to do this problem. Now I didn't have to isolate and find the actual inverse function. I wanna go back to when I switched x and y, which is right in this moment right here. I had just switched x and y. Now if I'm just solving for putting a value into the inverse function, there's no reason I need to re-isolate y to figure out what this is. I don't need to know. What I wanna know is, well, what happens when I plug in 10 into the inverse function? So I can plug in 10 when x is over here without isolating the way that I did. And that's definitely the most crafty way to approach this problem. Divide both sides by five. Now I have two equals the square root of two y. Square both sides. I'll move it up to here. Two squared over here is four. Rad two y squared is two y. Divide by two. And again, we find that two equals y, but this is definitely a much more direct route, still making the answer choice C.